As the days of summer dwindle in Boston, the pace quickens and the intensity rises. Hockey season is approaching. That means around the city and around the globe, the men of the Boston Bruins are working hard to make their final preparations for the grueling marathon ahead. For Bruins forward David Pasternak, that work occurs in his beloved hometown of Prague in the Czech Republic. This is classic downtown, small streets here. You see the tattoo I have here? That's the Charles Bridge and the, the museum right here. Yeah, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. David is rightfully proud of his city, but he's not here as a tourist. He's here training for the upcoming season. Absolutely feel it. Now we all know David plays professional hockey, but did you know he also plays tennis? That's right, tennis. Yeah, for me it's like you know, a little little different than than uh, just hockey whole season, and especially with tennis, it's it's. It's still, you know, a, a different mentality. You have to think different. You know, you are on the court by yourself, so uh, there's nobody who can help you. And, and for me, it's it's good, good tough uh, mental toughness workout. You know, it's not your usual off ice workout, but tennis helps David with his in-game mindset, as well as his conditioning. Most importantly, he truly loves playing. It's fun to see, you know, what what the tennis players has to go through, and it's hard, you know, and and I think it. Uh, the more you go through it, you know, the, the mental toughness, you, you get better at it. While 88 gets his sweat on over in the Czech Republic, a few of his teammates are back home enjoying a day on the links. No, the boys won't be playing golf today, but they will be watching the world's best tee off as the PGA comes to town. The only issue is that the VIP inside the rope passes are limited. Guys, can I high five, guys? Come on. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Tukes had no idea it was me. Is that the lead right there? Yeah. And DeChambeau now with his second, Roger. How far do you think he is to the green? I mean, what do you think he just hit? Like 150 wedge. yards wedge? Okay. Wait, how come you're not inside the ropes? I don't know. I, I'm not a good enough player. Not good. Tiger Woods remains a huge draw. So naturally, the boys are all hoping for a few minutes with the legend. But Sean Corrali is the only one able to snag a little face time. Well, sort of. I ran into Tiger on the course. It's pretty surreal. I was surprised he was on the other side of the ropes. We check in with our Tiger Woods lookalike again. There he is on the rope saying, hey, real Tiger, give me a little skin. Come on, pal. How about it? Oh, oh, God, are <laughs> kidding me? No, I asked if I could take a selfie, and he said yes. So you walk with him, p -Holes? I walked with him. I said, I was like, bro, you know you have a driver. And, he's like, and then he, all of a sudden I looked over there, and he was like, <laughs> The real Tiger Woods sinks that putt, but finishes the tournament tied for 24th. Regardless, the Bruins enjoy their day on the course 
especially with training camp right around the corner. In a rink on the outskirts of Stockholm, Sweden, the Bruins offseason continues with newly acquired forward Joachim Nordstrom. Yeah! Nordstrom helped the Blackhawks win the Cup in 2015 and spent the last three seasons with the Carolina Hurricanes. In Boston, he's expected to play on the third or fourth lines and kill penalties. Yep! But before Nordstrom makes his Boston debut, he wants to show off his hometown, the beautiful and historic capital of Sweden, Stockholm. This is like Old Town, this island here. It's between that bridge going north and behind the Royal Palace, there's uh, one bridge going south. Uh, so this is uh, Gamla Stan, Old Town. I think this is where Stockholm was founded in like 800 years ago. Yeah, so this is where uh, the king lives, but uh, I don't think he's here right now. Usually they put up a flag when he's like in the castle, and I don't see the flag from here, to be honest. I grew up just about 20, 25 minutes away from here, from the downtown area, so in a suburb called uh, Tyreso. My parents still, they live in the same house uh, that I grew up in, and, and uh, I sp actually spent this summer in, in their house, so it was nice coming home and, and going back to uh, you know, my, my childhood home. Oh yeah, this is the Noble Museum. The Noble, what is that called, the Noble Prize? The oh, City, City Hall, Hall is right over there. And that's where they have the dinner for like the Noble Awards. Yeah, so now we're here at uh, Fjällgatan, which basically translates to Feather Street. Uh, over there, that's like the, the City Hall is over there. Um, down there is Old Town, where we just went. Uh, over here is uh, Grana Lund, the amusement park. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. They got some, uh, some good roller coasters. I like it up here because you know, it's kind of peaceful. Just looking out over Stockholm, is, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's home, so uh, I definitely, definitely enjoy coming here. Home of the Chicago Blackhawks lies 4,284 miles west of Stockholm. Today, a couple of notable visitors from Boston are in town. But as much as it may look like it, Charlie McAvoy and Patrice Bergeron are not here to play hockey today. They're here for the NHL's annual player media tour. How's it going, man? Hey man. How's everything? Sir? Yeah, how about you? Oh, very good. I'll see you later. Yeah, you're yeah. Fergie, talk to you later. For pro hockey's best and brightest, it's two days of interviews, pictures, social media, and video shoots for the upcoming season. And action. Happy birthday. Ready and action. Cameras, yeah, I set up. See that? Wow. Dude, this isn't even ice. It's just straight. It's like skating on carpet. Who was the first player in the NHL to score 100 points in a single season? Phil Esposito in the 68-69 season. Of course, along with all the cool and exciting stuff, there are always a few curveballs mixed in especially for a young player on his first tour. Oh, uh, check it out. We got, uh... No, stop. Yeah, are you not a big animal guy? No. Oh, darn. Well, that kind of sucks, because we got a game going on in here. It's called What's in the Box. Yeah, I'm not playing that game. What? Was it a kiwi? I don't know, man. It's like a, it looks like a mixture between a... Oh, it's actually... Between a squirrel and like a... 
pick a dildo. I don't know, man. Dude, I'm not like, I'm not actually putting my hand in there. Everyone's doing it. That's funny. My hands are right yeah, now. They're very clammy. <laughs> very clammy. How far away am I? About six inches. You have to extend your fingers. Yeah, I don't want it though. <laughs> not even close. Yeah, right. Oh, oh. Yeah, right there. Dude. Okay. It's spam. <laughs> While the new guy wrestles with the mystery meat, the veteran has an easier and much less slimy gig. Really excited. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be our uh, third outdoor game, but then our first on the road, so that's going to be uh, something different. Um, Another successful outing for 37 and spam aside. It looks like Charlie enjoyed his first ever player media tour. Plus, he's got some professional headshots for down the road, just in case he needs them. I look like I wrote a book, and that's my album cover. David Posternak is living at his childhood home in the Czech Republic for the summer, working hard and enjoying time with his mom and other family. I had a nice early workout. Walking my dog now. It's Apple. Apple. Epi. She don't like camera guys. Hockey players are definitely all about routine. So after the morning walk, it's bath time, whether Apple likes it or not. She hates water too. Plays not dirty, wash her feet. Hey. <laughs> Oh, 11 years old is 11 years old, right? Lots of great things about living at home. You get to hang out with your dog, spend time with family and friends, plus sleep in some familiar surroundings. I live in my room for a couple months, once a year, always. Nothing crazy, just some closet, a couple pictures, and bed, all you need. I auctioned this beautiful stick from the fresh uh, Stanley Cup champion. Ovechkin, so this is something I, I'm happy about and I'm gonna save this for, for some day. Show my kids. Pasta milk, of course. We all know that one. Oh, first NHL call, actually, still here. Right. There's no, I, because I tried to change it, but I don't know what my mom made it up here. But we have November 20, 12 months a year. We like Tori, we like to look at his face and all, so <laughs> we have it here. David tragically lost his father to cancer at a young age, so probably the best part of being home all summer are the memories he gets to enjoy. My dad made this thing, you know, back when he played in Germany. Pictures, me, father's helmet, first time on the ice. We do, look at the skates. You see the lady skates? It says, my first steps to hockey. It started with me learning how to skate on the roller skates. And then I was skating, 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 <laughs> until I learned that. And, and today, I'm, I'm already playing nine years and I still like it. It's a good story. Yeah, I would give myself A plus. That's pretty bad. I was 12 years old. I was 12 years old while I was writing this story. That's a pretty bad story. Now the TD Garden is no stranger to press conferences, but today the Bruins have something very unique and exciting to share. I'm incredibly proud to announce today that the Boston Bruins Foundation and the Special Olympics Massachusetts have formed a three-year partnership. And over the course of those three years, the foundation will be committing $1 million to Special Olympics Massachusetts. And I would like to stress the word that this goes beyond the monetary $1 million that we just mentioned. This is really about us activating, when I say us, I'm referring Special Olympics Massachusetts, Boston Bruins, our sponsors, our corporate sponsors, in the community. All right. 
The official kickoff event for the new Bruins Special Olympics partnership is also a sign that training camp is right around the corner, the annual Bruins golf tournament. Everybody's looking good and having fun while they raise money for a great cause. But we are discovering that golf is not Jake DeBrusque's game. Winning, winning team. <laughs> <laughs> Showtime. Cameras are out. <laughs> it's a mulligan. Just a little off. It's on the green. Yeah. Cameron didn't get that mulligan, eh? Again, I muffed it. Ah. <laughs> the good news for Jake is that the Bruins Special Olympics partnership is off to a great start. And golf season is over. Bruins training camp is up next. After a long summer, the boys are finally back. It's day one of training camp, and the full group is now together for the first time since last season. But this year's camp will be unlike any other. Half the squad will remain in Boston, while the other half embarks on the longest road trip in Bruins history, a 10-day journey to China where they will play two exhibition games against the Calgary Flames. Certainly different circumstances than what you know the group is generally used to with, with sort of a split camp. You guys have selected chosen ones uh, to go and represent uh, a really unique opportunity. And I think that you know, Marsha, you guys used uh, 2011 as a hell of an experience and, and parlayed it into a pretty good situation. So I think it's, it's got some similar parallels for you guys to be able to take advantage of the opportunity you know, to come together as a group. Butch? Yeah, that's it from my perspective. This is day one of camp. It's back to business. Uh, testing today, uh, once we get over there again, when you're away from the rink, it's a different part of the world. Enjoy it, see it, get out there. You may not get a chance to experience it again, but when you're at the rink, it's, it's business, right? And everyone's kind of in a different spot. Some guys are obviously solidified here. Uh, other guys are fighting for opportunity, you know? But our expectations ramped up because of last year, but everyone starts even. So, it's not automatic, you're gonna have success, so we gotta make sure we're ready to put the work in. Essentially, starts this morning and carries over over there, so let's make sure we understand where we are and, uh, and be ready to compete. All right, good. Many of the Bruins have had experience with hockey in China, thanks to the club's partnership with ORG Packaging, which has sent the team overseas for the past three summers. Ready to go. Get me on the plane already. It's almost 8,000 miles from Boston to Shenzhen, China, where the Bees will play their first preseason game. Between the time change and the distance, there's no time to waste. The team will be traveling first class on a specially reserved private plane for the 16-hour trip. A new experience for the guys, especially the fully reclining seats. There's plenty of buttons. I'm not sure I'll get into the 16 hours or whatever it is. We'll figure it out. Maybe this one's a massage one. Is it? Is it? I don't know, dude. It might. What is that? Oh, that brings your back out a little bit. We got a lot going on. One of the other things going on is Brad Marchand's absolutely spectacular new flow. The man butt. Marcia, I like that. I like you. I like that. I don't get, I don't get, I don't get, I don't get. 
I help you, eh? You were a little nervous what's gonna be the reaction. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, I, li oh, yeah. I like it. Thanks, bro. I'm nervous. Once the boys are airborne, the most popular activity seems to be catching some Zs. Though up and coming centerman Jacob Forceback at Carlson is a notable exception. Not before, yeah. I don't know, I think it was uh, maybe 12, 13. I, was, uh, I had like a break from school and I didn't really have anything to do at home, so I looked up how to do it and then that's when I started. I might have to fast forward this one a little bit. But. As the long flight starts to wind down, David Backus gets the chance to help out the flight crew as well as have a little fun. Yeah, gonna uh, test my hand at one of my my dreams of making a radio announcement in a plane. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your assistant captain from the flight deck. Uh, we've begun our approach into the Shenzhen area. Uh, weather in Shenzhen on arrival will be about 83 degrees Fahrenheit. We've also wanted to let you know that this is a record-setting flight. We've had Brad Marshan has slept 14 and a half of the 15 hours so far, and he's expected to sleep the last full hour of the flight. So uh, make sure you congratulate him on the way off the plane. Other than that, I invite you to relax, sit back, enjoy the rest of the flight. And uh, one last thing, Tower on the way out of Boston said go Bruins, so I want to relay that message to everybody in the back. See you on the ground. Very nice. That's fantastic. Hopefully it sounded good back there. Very natural. And just like that, your Boston Bruins are on the ground in Shenzhen, China. They will get some time to regroup, and then it's on to game one against the Flames. Boston Bruins are in Shenzhen, China to play the first of two exhibition games against the Calgary Flames. It's certainly unfamiliar territory, but no matter where you are, the rituals of hockey pregame remain the same. Even though they don't count in the standings, the China games are a big deal for the NHL and the team. So Bruins owner Jeremy Jacobs is on hand to take it all in. Yeah, it's a special trip, so enjoy the holiday yourself. That's where you do this play very well. Jacobs, how are you doing? You got taller. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so you got the toothpicks? Wrapped with all the money we pay. Well, look at Marcy's nose. <laughs> the important thing today is, you know, get, get your feet moving, get into the game and win your share of pucks, all right? You'll hear that a lot this year. Win your puck battles, all right? That's the most important thing. Let's not overthink the game, you young guys. You gotta play. You just gotta get out there and play, and play with pace, and like I said, win your share of pucks, and we'll sort you through the, uh, the structure piece of it, all right? We got uh, Stunichka, Marsh, Pasta, Moore, uh, and Charlie, and, uh, and Yarrow and Nets here. Let's go have a good first. Go, uh. Now, it may be China, and it may be a preseason exhibition game, but Brad Marchand is, well, still Brad Marchand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You are a goalie? You do the same thing. <laughs> oh, f tiny little. F oh, good stick. Sorry, Bax. I should have shot it when you gave it to me originally, but... Along with being the usual offensive and chirping threat, Brad is also wearing the A tonight and is a vocal presence helping lead the team. Try it, boys. Good stick, Teddy. Oh! Come on, boys. Little help there. Little help. Why are we doing that play? 
Right. Yeah, so it's got to happen right away. It yeah. doesn't happen right away. It's, it's a little tough. No, it's a good try. Deep into a scoreless first period, the Bruins get on the board with a series of quick strikes to take the lead. And it's a two on one for the Bruins. Donato scores! Good shot. If it was Bergie. Over to Giordano with a one timer scores! Mark Giordano, second of the game, and the Flames tie it at three. Brad Marchand has to score. Gillies with a save will win it for Calgary. Jake DeBrusque can win it for the Bruins. Scores! And the Bruins survive the Flames' comeback attempt. Good job, baby. So, a successful debut in China for the Bruins. Meanwhile, there is more good news for the other half of the squad in Boston. They're talking about me? Yeah. Defenseman Tory Krug, who fractured his ankle in the playoffs and missed the start of training camp, is back on the ice. It's going to take forever. Oh! Don't even wait for him to get in the net, boys. Just fire. Flip the over! Oh, yeah! Too fast, Chris! That's it? Thank God. Progress has been made, but no contact for 47 just yet. He will keep working and hopefully be ready for the start of the season. The Bruins' epic team trip to China continues with an off day to remember, a visit to one of the true wonders of the world, the Great Wall. View. Portion, <laughs> portion, <laughs> portion, portion. <laughs> it's a good looking guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's certainly a once in a lifetime opportunity for the Bruins to see the Great Wall with their teammates. But there's a few guys who need just a little more. Higher. Can you get there? Oh, I can. Right. How am I going to get down, though? <laughs> <laughs> Easy game. <laughs> a memorable day for the team atop the Great Wall of China, but for David Backus, the most fun part of the day may just be the trip down. Get him, too! Now that's fun. That guy had fun. Oh. <laughs> you got the pace car on here. <laughs> that was fun. Would have been nice to go full balls all the way down, but uh, when you got the pace car in front of you, you gotta you gotta keep pace, I guess. While half of the team is in China, the other half is home in Boston, playing their first preseason game. Go ahead. Let's go. Let's go. With Bruce Cassidy traveling, assistant coach Joe Sacco, who served four seasons as a head coach in Colorado, will be running the show behind the Bruins bench. Speed here. Speed, Zach. Speed. Good job. Right there in the corner. I went from that side. 
over to the other side there. You gotta come out. Okay. Always come out to the front of the net. Back. Just remember, as soon as that puck moves up, it'll move on. Once that guy, third guy rolls high, get away from our net. As the man in charge tonight, Joe has a lot going on. He's teaching, motivating, evaluating, and oh yeah, trying to win a hockey game. On those strong sides, boys, make sure that winger hole on the board holds, all right? Towards the front, a wrist shot from Lauko. Fires and scores! That's it, boys. Waves, hey? One wave after another. Keep it down there. Not much scoring in this game, so it finally goes to the shootout, where there's a happy ending for Coach Sacco and the Bees. Put that one-hander to the cage. Boston will win this one in shootout fashion behind Zane McIntyre. Good job tonight. Great job on the kill there at the end there, guys. Uh, Zane, good job in that. Coming up with some good saves. We'll get your rest tonight and be ready to go tomorrow, okay? You guys will be notified about the schedule. Good job, boys. Great job, guys. Back in China, the Bruins' monster road trip continues in the bustling capital of Beijing. But before they get back on the ice, it's time for a visit to the city's famed Silk Market for a serious shopping expedition. What is it? This is Rolex with the Dava Ranch. Oh. Pure quality. Here style. I need one for my house at all. <sighs> no one leaves the silk market empty-handed. Certainly not a bus full of traveling hockey players, who all seem pretty pleased with their purchases. Oh. Got a nice AP watch. Uh, Rolex watch and a uh, pair of shoes for my brother, his 21st birthday. Well, I went with the intention of getting a, some sort of purse or backpack for my daughter, so I got her a Burberry uh, pink, and I was told that this is the latest style of pink. She loves pink, but she wouldn't let me walk out. It was a two for one deal, so I had to choose something for Julie, my wife, and I got her a, uh, a Gucci bag. And then for my son, I got him a little messy jersey and short set, which I gotta tell you, was the most difficult haggling of all of them today. This lady was very upset with me that over a, essentially a $10 purchase. But I tell you this, part of the fun of it is haggling. They are comical, some of them the way they go about it. Some of them a little rougher than others, but I had fun doing it. Uh, the, the ladies were nice, so it was a good experience. When the Bruins went to China, they brought their top two goalies, Tuka Rask and Yaroslav Halak. But they have also signed a special player to be their third string emergency goalie for this trip. Say hello to Derek Dunn, a 24-year-old British Columbia native of Chinese descent who spent last season in the KHL. Nope. It is like a dream come true, and it's, it's, it's just a surreal moment just to kind of step on, step out on the ice and uh, practice with some of the best players in the world and uh, just be out there. Come on. Just my buddies. It was good. It was fast and uh, quick. I mean, it's pretty much everything you kind of expect. It's uh, some of the best players in the world are out there, so got to keep sharp and uh, kind of be on my toes. All right. Right in the glove, come on. Ah, opposite. Ah, fah. That was tricky. <laughs> Old school. Yeah, I, I just kind of watch them. It's, it's fun to watch. Easy. They just look so easy to them. All, right. all in all, an amazing experience for a young goaltender, as well as a great chance to learn from some veteran NHL netminders. Oh, yeah. Earlier in the trip, a number of the players met with a tailor and decided to order some custom-fitted suits. 
Now in Beijing, the final products have arrived. Well, we finished practice here on day two at ORG Arena, and now it's time to get fitted for our suits. Uh, this will be my A suit going forward, and uh, expect to see this on a road trip soon. Excited, what we got? Now, there's always a lot of competition for best dressed man on the Boston Bruins, but this year, before the season even starts, Brad Marchand is your winner, and it's not close. That says I live in the North Island. This? It's not a black one. Oh, you want three piece? Of course you do. Everything's three piece. All 16. All oh, I would be like, oh my god, that's one. Just one. <laughs> nice! Ha ha ha! And if you don't want to wear them, you can just give them to Sawyer, she can dress her dolls <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. In Beijing, the Bruins' historic preseason trip to China enters its final act, Game 2 against the Calgary Flames. David Pasternak and his teammates will be heading home after this game, and even though it's only an exhibition, no one wants to be dwelling on a loss for that 16-hour flight. Come on, 4-2, let's do it, baby. Don't sleep, don't sleep. Ah, ah. You gonna get one tonight? She's here. Hey, there's a puck on the ice, you see that? Yeah, I got it. Marcy, Marcy, Marcy. Number 88 is working hard, but the results aren't there in this game just yet. I don't know how much time I had there. Yeah. Calgary's tying goal very late in the second period does not improve anyone's mood on the Bruins bench. But there are better results in the third. March. and got it away from Smith, and they score! Popped right out for DeBrusque, who has his second of the game. Love the Sally. James Evans. James huh? Evans. <laughs> Boston finishes strong and wins 3-1, making them 2-0 on the road in China. So David and the boys will take it, even if it wasn't perfect. A lot of swears today, eh? Too many bad words. After a grueling nine-day trip across the globe, the Bruins are anxious to get home. But they always have time to say thank you to our servicemen and women, especially those serving overseas. What's everybody across the side? Guys, what's, what's going on? on? How you doing? Kevin, sorry, I'm a little smelly and sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, guys. Hey, you guys want to say hi? Yes. How you doing, man? Sergeant Owen. Charlie. Marine Corps guys. How's it going? Yeah, Sergeant Jeffrey Owen. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, just getting a good game out there. Same time, it was fun. I think we were here for nine days. So. All right, okay. A fitting end to a fantastic trip. Now it's back to Boston to finish up training camp and get ready for the long season ahead.
It's become tradition for the team and the entire extended Bruins family to gather at the end of training camp for a few relaxing moments before the start of the new season. Okay. Lots of great food and fun for kids of all ages. There's also some time for a few words about the season to come from Bruins president, Cam Neely. I want to welcome all the new players and families. I think we're all pleased that camp is over. Uh, it was an interesting camp, obviously, with a bunch of the guys over in China and, and a bunch back here. I know it was challenging for a lot of the players, certainly challenging for the training staff and the coaching staff, so thank you guys very much. I know it was an interesting trip for all of us that went over there, and we got to see a little bit different culture. But overall, I hope you guys really enjoyed the trip and bonded a little bit uh, as we head into camp. Listen, let's have a great year. I know uh, we can feed uh, off a lot from what we did last year. We accomplished a, a great deal last year, both in the regular season. Obviously, uh, the second round wasn't what we wanted, but I think for some of you to get in the playoffs for the first time and really understand what it takes to to win in the playoffs uh, is a great learning experience for you. So we're all excited about the season. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. The feeling around the 2018-19 Boston Bruins is undeniable as training camp breaks and the club readies for a long regular season campaign. The black and gold have made significant strides over the past two seasons towards their ultimate goal. The infusion of young players continues to gel with the all-star core. But with this positive climb comes a rise in expectations. It's time to see what's in store for this edition of The Spoked Bee. The Bruins are back. Let's go.